All right. Well, thank you again, Robert, for doing this uh, Q&A with us. I know we had a lot of feedback um, and they enjoyed your presentation. Um, a lot of forensic science questions have come in. So let's begin. Um, so one of the questions is, as we were talking about earlier, Robert, as you are still kind of struggling with this as well, is uh, virtual labs for forensic science. So how are you handling your virtual labs? Uh, I have some things online. Um, I found some DNA virtual labs um, by, and once again, I mean, I don't have it on top of my head, but uh, I can be reached through the email. Um, I have a DNA virtual lab. There is, and it's all online that I found um, by just Googling it. Um, another one is a firearm ID virtual lab where you can actually use the stereo microscope and you can um, turn the, the stages to find lands and grooves. That, that was um, a pretty good one that we can get free access for. Um, I found some virtual crime scenes, uh, particularly for a, uh, it was a museum in Canada that I used actually last year at the end of the year. There's two virtual crime scenes. One's kind of, I like to call it Mickey Mouse. It's, it's for, you know, kind of the younger kids or level ones. But another one has some anthropology, some, um, some death investigation portion. It's, it's pretty good, um, but it's pretty confusing if you don't guide the kids through it. But uh, I'll, I can put those descriptions in anybody that uh, is wanting that if they contact me. Thank you, Robert. Another question was in the spring, how did you uh, use ICEV virtually for your forensic science class? Well, that, that was pretty easy. I, we use Google Classroom here. And so what I would tell the students is I would put their agenda in Google Classroom and tell them um, we're on these subjects here. So we're going to do um, the lesson on collection of evidence or processing or crime scene, whatever it particularly was. And then in ICV, I would just unlock the assignments that I wanted them to do and the assessments. So um, I would see when we went on lockdown, uh, the district immediately said nothing was uh, required. So I got very little participation. But then, you know, the kids that wanted to, I was able to meet with over Google Meet and um, tell them or help them through it if they had questions. So it was pretty easy in the lockdown. Um, at, at the end of the spring last year, I just unlocked the the assignments and, and told them to, you know, what they're pacing, I guess, so they didn't feel overwhelmed. Robert, the next question was about, um, let me pull up, about Doc Hub. Um, it says, is Doc Hub free for teachers to use? I know you talked about that in your presentation, but can you explain a little bit more? Yeah, it was actually, a, a, if you just go to dochub.com, um, it is a Google Google app. Uh, you can sign in through a Google account, and it's it's really cool. You can upload any PDF file that you have, or pretty much anything, and you could edit it. Um, you could put in um, sections where you want students to type in. But uh, it was just DocHub.com. Let me actually verify that, or just go through Google and just hit DocHub. Uh, yeah. It, it shows up, you just sign in with your Google um, address or sign in with any address that you have with your school. Robert, how do you get your students to uh, interact um, with your classroom virtually or whenever they were actually in the classroom? In the classroom, I had them in groups of four. So kind of essentially crime scene groups. Uh, they would, for the level ones, they would process the crime scene as, as team members. Uh, level twos were mainly paired up. I had small enough classroom, uh, classroom size where pairing them up was uh, easy to do and they could uh, help each other along the way. Um, so everything that I did was based on group work. Uh, there was always an individual portion where I would show the entire class to do and then they would do it as their group. Um, so it was always kind of um, always associated with the group. That's how I had them seating and everything. There was a certain lesson that your students enjoyed uh, the most or activity and would you want to provide that? Well, uh, in level two um, was definitely anything dealing with ballistics, blood spatter, they love that uh, because it's messy. Um, actually, I would like to say everything in level two, so all your lab stuff they love. 
Uh, level three, they, they liked autopsy, uh, and that was the specific ICV content. Um, death investigations, they enjoyed that. And then level one was uh, anything dealing with processing the crime scene. So any time I would put a crime scene out or uh, for them to uh, evaluate, they, they always love that kind of stuff. Fingerprinting, oh, that's another one. Fingerprinting, huge on all levels. So for fingerprinting, um, we've had a few questions in previous sessions about how do you do uh, activities like fingerprinting virtually? Um, do you bring maybe um, some different um, items in? I know one teacher said she's using a Hershey bar or something like that. Um, what, what would you recommend? So yeah, yeah something um, to get a plastic print would, you know, clay, uh, kids, Play-Doh, um, anything that they can that's kind of gooey uh, to, for them to view their fingerprint. And nowadays, most of the kids, they're gonna have a phone that they can zoom in on so that they can take a photo of that or see it live and then zoom in to see the individual um, minutia or you know, the ridge characteristics or the ridge detail. Um, that's, that's a good one. Uh, I'm actually working on right now, trying to create a, crime, um, a fingerprinting kit that I'll try to get to the students this year during that time so they can take you know a dusting brush home or and dusting powder a little bit so they can practice on their own um, but those were that's something that they can do without even you know coming to the school to pick anything up you know something that is pliable putty like to put a print on thanks robert that's all the questions that i had um i'm gonna leave it open does anybody else have additional questions that you want to put into the chat Hey, Robert, are you going to continue using Google Classroom or are you moving to Canvas? Uh, yeah, we're actually moving to, well, they, they've always had Canvas. So I'm going to be moving to Canvas now that I know the great feature of uh, Canvas will grade everything for us and put it into um, our grade books, which will alleviate a lot of the strain that we have as teachers to, to grade. Um, now I can start working on that engagement part uh, with the students virtually. Awesome. And I think I gave you your key in secret already last spring, right? Yep. Yep. I started to upload it in my Canvas now. Or I'm cool. in the... and how was that process? Um, it was easy. Uh, it's just you got to remember all those the steps. It's actually it's not too bad. It, just can't feel overwhelmed, I guess, <laughs> you know, with all the other thing with, with Canvas, but actually getting it in, we have a great uh, tech group here at CCSD. Uh, I had a virtual call with him and uh, he walked me through the entire process and it was, uh, he was actually kind of learning on while we were doing it as well. So it was a good learning experience for all of us, but it wasn't hard at all. Everything worked smoothly. The minute it was in, we didn't have any issues. Good. And I think it probably also helps, you know, the ICEV content so well, you're probably very easy to go to the picker and pick what activities you want to bring into Canvas. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I could see that as being uh, kind of uh, a little overwhelming for new users when integrating it into Canvas. But, um, you know, like I said in my presentation, just start small, you know. Well, that is all the time that we have. Thank you, Robert, for joining us um i know robert said he was going to put his email in the chat for any that have additional questions um for those that are waiting for the code dusty just put that um into the chat button but it is law law prac so law pract l a w p r a c t zero five zero so that's your challenge code um, and also Robert put his email in the chat as well for you to ask any additional questions. So thank you again, Robert, and thank you all for attending.